what's up y'all let me put my lights on wait let me turn this music down for the before i get striked what's going on y'all it's friday i got the phone i got the thing plugged into the wrong phone it needs to be plugged in i'm turning the brightness up honey go just go if you want to get by go you about to hit me i'm not in into any inconveniences on a friday you hear me what's going on um go ahead and like subscribe and comment let the demon know you stop by but um i'm trying to see i'm trying to see what y'all talking about i said let's what are we gonna talk about today let me see i got two people say something I, I should have put it up early. The white guy from Friends, <laughs> David Schwimmer. Yes, he got Erica. Erica Alexander let David Schwimmer have it. Um, oh no. Okay. So jury duty update. Um, honey, we don't go back to Wednesday. I'm like, okay. So why I, I got a report? And you know when you don't go, you got to go to work. Of course, you just can't be sitting like I'm on jury duty. I'm at home. I'm on jury duty. But I asked the question yesterday because I heard the judge tell like somebody who didn't show up for jury duty. Um, he sent a bench warrant out for their arrest and fined them 25, I think he said $2,500 um, to fine them $2,500. But my thing is, if I, I could get fined $2,500, why don't you pay me $2,500? Because it's clearly that people don't show up to jury duty to do their civic duty and to do all this other stuff that every you try to make it seem like it's the greatest thing to do, but you don't make you like Craig said it's the deterrent is is more of a motivator than it is to create an an incentive incentive if you incentivize jury duty people would be showing up for jury duty you wouldn't have to you wouldn't have to sit put out bench warrants and you wouldn't have to you know cause people in the whole thing is an inconvenience so what you're not only doing is telling people you must show up or I'm going to or you're going to get arrested and or you're going to get fined $2500. Okay, so give me that $2500 so that I'll come to jury duty. Give it to me. If I complete service of jury, if I don't get dismissed for whatever reason, I'm able to go back to work. Give me $2,500 then. And I'm right here. I'm waiting. Come on, let's go. That, I don't understand that. It's like, it's so, this country does the, the things so backward. Everything you get penalized for. Every Everything is a way to get your ass in some type of court system. Why are you penalizing people for not showing up? Because they are going to lose their job. So let me make, create more of an inconvenience for this person by not only putting out a failure to appear, but then also telling them you get you got to give me you got to give me twenty five hundred dollars motherfucker i don't have twenty five hundred dollars that's the reason why i can't come to jury duty because i can't miss work it's like the logic where does the logic go i don't understand but that's that like i said it's a the system honey i didn't got pissed real quick it's the way that i don't understand when he said that i was like twenty five hundred dollars god damn but you only gonna pay people fifteen dollars a day. Uh, what? How much do they pay a day in your in your um county or city, in your state and county? How much do they pay y'all to show up for jury duty? This paper I saw yesterday said twenty five. I mean not twenty five. Fifteen dollars a day. Who? Where? Where does that happen? Fifteen dollars a day. You? I'm honey. Day laborers make more than that. I could stand outside a goddamn. Home Depot and make more than that? The fuck? But that's my civic duty. My civic duty only is, is only worth $15 a day. So how important is it? Because if it was really important, you'd pay a motherfucker to do it. I done got pissed. I just was thinking about that shit pissed me off. Now I gotta go to work. Child, let me see what's going on. I don't even know what I'm walking into today, child. And then we don't report until next Wednesday. We don't report until next to the 5th child it's almost february what's going on the sky is so pretty this morning it's like a like a pink cotton cotton candy purplish bluish nice it's nice all right let me get from behind you since you want to play these games so i heard that um somebody sent me said did, did i hear about Khalees? what she said about the neptunes 
I did. I read it because I didn't see it at first. I saw her name up. Like, I was like, what's going on with Khalees, you know? Because I'm, you know, I love Khalees. I have all of Khalees' albums, every single one of them. Every single one of them, even food. I love fucking Khalees. Do you hear me? I love her. From the beginning, from the beginning, I even have, um, never mind. Anyway, so, um, I love Khalees. I'm here for Khalees. Always been here. I love that she's doing her chef thing. She has a daddy. I love the fact that she's farming. I love that shit. I think more black people need to farm because that's where we come from. That's where our, our peoples come from. We're farmers. Um, I think that I don't know. I don't know why. I I have a I have a theory as to why black people went like steered away from farming. Um, but you know, I think it has a lot to do with um, the idea of being in a field it doesn't it's not a good it's not a good feeling for some people some people don't want to be associated with being in fields you know what i'm saying um eat, picking whatever even if it, it's crazy because even if it's it it could be your own land and you don't want to do it because it you're it, it's so associated with slavery i don't know what the fuck this bitch is doing why if you go on this goddamn slow bitch you need to be over here melted face large march i'm large march since she's driving so damn slow anyway so i love khalees that's my disclaimer i love khalees i and i you know i'm here for nas too if we, we want to go on you know i'm glad that um, nas is doing a, a song with Lil nas x i haven't heard it i heard i heard that it's out but i haven't listened to it yet and i'm glad because especially oh my god why did my son do that why did he do that? He put a, put that back seat up. The back. You, you see it? It's up and I can't see behind me. God damn it. Now I'm going to have to stop. Anyways, so I love Khalees, right? And when I get off this freeway, I'm about to stop because I can't drive like that with, the, with that window up like that. Let me, honey, are you getting over? Yeah. So... I read what she said about I guess it was a article in the Guardian I want to say it was the Guardian and um, she just said that they basically took her money from her they stepped her from her money she didn't make anything from her first uh, couple albums because um, they didn't do they did the deal and they didn't do it right and she was young and you know and then on top of having a, an intimate relationship with Pharrell, that probably screwed up her mind a little bit. It, you know, you have this, you you know what I mean? I'm not going to even get into the scenario, but you know how it is. Young girl, okay, I have a career now. I'm screwing the producer. We're making great music. I'm almost like his muse. You know what I'm saying? And here you are stiffing me out of money. I love Pharrell, I love Chad, I love Shay, I love the Neptunes, one of the um, NERD's albums is on my top four list of albums, like I, I love NERD, I love Pharrell, I love, let me tell you something about the music industry, you can be mad all you want to, but that is the way of the music industry, it has never been different, it's always been a way to exploit the artists, someone, and, and, the, and typically those artists are poor, and it's a way to exploit them, show them some money. They still do it. It's nothing that is different. Am I disappointed? Yeah. Am I shocked? No. It, am I like, mm. that, that seems on trend with the industry. You know, you've had, um, not Puffy, um, Jermaine Dupri. I think it was Jermaine Dupri who said that that was the way of the business. Like, it's like almost as though they're like I don't think Puffy has ever apologized for I, I don't I haven't seen him apologize for what he did to all of his artists like that's why it's ironic for Puffy to stand up on stage at Clive Davis's party and bitch about you got 365 days nigga you was fucking people over too like really fucking people over people was leaving bad boy like bam 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 like a way to get the fuck out because you was doing the same thing that white producers and re record labels were doing to black artists from the beginning of time since, since black people have been in music and it's and it's not just black people like any in the record industry across the board 
is always fucking over somebody. But when you are dealing with a group of people who come from nothing, don't have the means, and they have they have a talent, and they get chosen, um, you know, they have a talent, and they get an opportunity, they take advantage of that opportunity. They give you advances when you don't even know that you don't even have the understanding that you have to pay that money back. You know, you don't know none of that. You don't. Okay, let me, let me, um, I think I found a straw. <laughs> let me get my straw. But anyway, so am I surprised? And you know what's so funny? I pictured that when she said in that article excerpt, she said that she saw him at an event years later and he was on stage and he, he saw her. And all he did was nod. And she's like thinking to, she wants to scream out like, you stiff me out of money. But she nods back. And she's like, when you nod back like that, it almost seems like there's an agreement like, oh, we're over our bullshit. But no, we're not. You took money from me. You didn't do me right. We were supposed to be friends. You know what I'm saying? So, so look at Amado La Negra. Can you imagine your, you, you tell your manager, your manager... I want to leave you and your manager comes back, not your record label, but your manager comes back and says, I own, if you leave me, I'm taking your masters. I'm your master. That's the point. Like if you think about it, it's you are, they have your masters, right? This is where you make money from that you can make money forever off of your master you must be your own master you cannot be a master or a slave like prince was trying to tell us you cannot be a slave to the master you need to own the master you got it that you understand how that shit works okay good good i'm glad everybody has an understanding so unfortunately for khalees who i love i think is it right no is it expected? Yes. Am I shocked? Not at all. Not at all. I figured that's the reason why she left them. I figured that's the reason why she on Tasty was like, I'm not fucking with y'all. Because y'all not doing me right. And then you're not even realizing because you really think that your crew has your back. You're that naive. And they're not, they don't have your back because they come from where they come from. And they want all the money. I think all these record producers that had labels and stuff like that, y'all need to, why isn't, why, if you look at it, now look at it, why the people of these record labels, the artists, why aren't they rich? Why didn't they, why didn't they continue on? Why didn't they, why don't they have, why don't, aren't, like, why do we have these unsungs? When you hear these un, unsungs, you watch them. What was it? The record label took their money. The record label was giving them, you saw Left Eye sit on the couch and do the mathematics behind how much they were actually making off a of CD. And even in that article, Khalees says, I didn't even notice because I was making money. That's because where you make your money is from what? Touring. I was making my money touring. So I wasn't even paying attention to how much I was getting paid off of the actual product, the work. And they were supposed to split it and didn't. And she ain't made no money off of her shit. And it's unfortunate. It really is. It's, it's messed up. It's messed up. So it is what it is. And, and even her, she's saying, I'm saying this. It's not. And this is the part that you play in someone's story. I, she's just telling her story. Does it make Pharrell and him look funny? Yeah, it does. But y'all should have played a different role because when people get the nerve, when people are done being ashamed of being bamboozled and hustled, they're going to start talking. And when they start talking, they're going to start telling your story and you may have changed. And so you want to silence them because you don't want nobody to hear how fucked up you used to be. But, you know, change behavior. You need to apologize and change your behavior, period. And that's the end of it. What else is going on? Shit. What else? Um, they said the boy with the um locks got a um the one that um was in Texas and they wouldn't let him walk the stage if unless he cut his locks. 
let, nigga, let's pretend. Let's pretend I cut him, okay? And let me put a beanie on. If the kid really wants to walk, we already talked about this. I would have said, give me my kid's diploma and fuck you guys. Period. Fuck y'all. I'm not about to change my child's hair. And, and, and it's a style that takes a lot of care and nurturing and attention. And you want him to cut his hair for five, less than five minutes for seconds to walk across stage and get a diploma that today in this society don't mean a fucking thing, a thing. <laughs> it don't mean a goddamn thing, a high school diploma. So that's what you want him to do, to change, change his appearance, to get a piece of paper after five seconds that don't mean nothing. It's nothing. The heart, he, he probably worked harder on his hair than he did in school. His hair will work more for him than that high school diploma. Y'all please, give me my diploma and let me get the fuck out of here. But Ellen DeGeneres gave him some kind of scholarship, some money, some scholarship. That was very thoughtful of her. Thank you, white lady. I said to myself, when somebody said, let's talk about that, it ain't nothing to talk about. Fuck that school. It shouldn't even be, it shouldn't even, yes, we're going to bring it to the attention of the news media. But the response should have been, give me my son's diploma and fuck this school. A high school diploma? Y'all about to do all of this for, for what? What is it worth? What is a high school diploma worth in 2020? Let's ask Google Alicia. I'm at a red light. What? I'm at a red light. Relax. What is a high school diploma worth? Diplomy. Diploma worth in 2020. It's coming up. I'll tell you at the next light. We'll tell you how much is a high school diploma worth. Y'all about to make my baby change his hair for what? Seconds and a piece of paper that don't mean shit. Girl. <laughs> Let's pretend, okay? Let's pretend, bitch. Anyway, so what else is going on? Um, I didn't watch the last episode of... I lost track of the days this week. I didn't watch the last episode of New Jersey Housewives. And that's what I should have been watching last night. Mmm. I've been going to sleep early. Like, you know, I don't know, like 1030. I've been falling asleep. I've been falling asleep. As soon as I turn the lights off, y'all, my body be like, okay, girl, <laughs> I got, we get it. It really responds like night. I've trained, because I used to stay up. I, I Honey, Diva calls me two o'clock girl, because I used to, I used to stay up i used to be up i used to be up like up 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 and i as i've gotten older darling i have i have said you know it doesn't help me my body doesn't have a, a chance to regenerate if i don't sleep i i need about i need about five hours of sleep to really um you know rest it's not really sleeping you know um I mean, I'm asleep, my eyes are closed, and I'm in a dream state, but I'm, my body is, you know, resting, and so your body, in that time, your body needs to replenish and regenerate and get you ready for the next day to go out into the wild and fight the bears and the lions and go get food for your family and then come back. You need, you need to rest in order to do that, um, and I, you know, as I've gotten older, I just have been like, I need to go to bed earlier otherwise I'll, I can I can stay up I can stay up like on the weekends I'll be up like and if you see probably see tweets of mine like early in the morning like early because I'm up tweeting or you know getting my thoughts out or whatever you know what I'm saying um let me know when I, child was like let me know when I get to a light so I can read you how much a high school diploma is worth because I, I ain't forgot um, what else is going on, y'all? So, does anybody have any plans this weekend? Any fun plans this weekend? Um, do y'all uh, celebrate um, Valentine's Valentine's Day? Do y'all celebrate Valentine's Day? Um, 
I don't give a shit about shit. I mean, you know, every month, every single month in this world, that's how every single month is something to buy some shit. Every single month. And I think except for the month of August, it's every month has a commercialized holiday celebration where you have to buy something. You have to buy something in order to celebrate it. That's how, you know, every month you got, you know, I don't, do we have to go through the months? Okay, January, we got New Year's. What else happens in January where we got to celebrate? Pretty much it's just New Year's. February is Valentine's Day. St. Patrick's Day is March. April is Easter. March also, isn't Mother's Day in March? Isn't, isn't Mother's Day in March? Or May, it's, that's May. So we have March, um... What do, you, what do you call it? St. Patrick's Day. April, you have Easter. April, May, you have graduations, proms, <laughs> and then you have um, Mother's Day, right? May, June, you have graduations, Father's Day. What else happens in June? July, 4th of July, August. There's no, it's funny because there's no holidays in august just my birthday <laughs> come on bitch uh let's see what's after september labor day when is memorial day when what month is memorial day it's in the beginning of the year and then labor day is at the end of the year and then september october halloween november thanksgiving december christmas and honey they parts they start putting the christmas stuff up in they start getting you ready and get you, getting your mind ready to start buying a bunch of shit that you don't fucking need. Uh, only part I like is the sales after Halloween when you go to Michael's and stuff and you get the skulls and the cute little crow and the cute little figurines and stuff like that that you like if you want to put like on your altar and stuff. Little, little nice little cute things with I like crows and skulls. <laughs> so I love it. I have a crow that was sitting on top of a skull that I got at um, um, Michael's. It was on my altar. I got it at Michael's. I think the the bird knows it fell and the bird's beak broke. So I thought I don't like nothing. Keep, I don't keep shit broke. Don't keep that's bad. Now that's bad feng shui. Don't keep shit that's broke because that's broke. That's broke energy, broken down energy, things that don't work. That's broken fix them or throw them shits out don't keep a bunch of shit around you that's broken okay okay what else is going on oh i stopped did i stop i'm running my mouth see it's already been 23 minutes oh my god y'all i don't know what else y'all want to talk about let me see what y'all said on the high school diploma where okay we coming to a stop <laughs> Yeah, I, I said, Khalees, that's, I mean, it's expected. I wasn't even shocked. I was like, oh, that's sad it happened to her, you know. But ask anybody. They all have been dicked over in some type of way. What? Hold on, I need to read that. <laughs> I saw $668. Wait a minute, is that how much a high school diploma is worth? Girl. And then it's crazy because it's like, I don't know, the whole educational system, I think it should be free education. But I think like when we talk about like a lot of have conversations about reparations and things that be, should be included in reparations, if you're going to use the education system as a way to determine how to hire people for work and stuff like that, it's unfair to um, have such a... It's, it's unfair for the education to be so expensive that the person needs to take out loans and then therefore they walk into the workforce with debt and because of their debt, they, it's, it's more difficult. They can't go and find a job in their field where they study, in the field that they study, that they spent all this money for. It's, it's hard because now I got to find a job so I can pay these, these, these loans off. And you see how how much the loan, how much the debt is, the student loan debt. You create, and it's like it's crazy because 
and America is touted as, you know, people are so intelligent here and people are so advanced and this and that, but everybody is in debt. Everybody's stuck in some fucking system that is keeping them from excelling. And it's, and it's, it's like, I heard Joe Rogan say, and it's like, why do you want to create a country of losers, of people who are losing? And just by losing, like you got debt from education, if you if you don't want to go to school, you got to be an entrepreneur. If you if if you try to be an entrepreneur, you're not making that much money. If you can't, you got to have access to education. If you tell these people this is how they compete because you need to have a master's or whatever on your a resume. You need to have this higher degree on your resume. But now I'm in debt and now I got to go get a job at fucking wherever so I can pay off this student loan debt. And now I'm fucking stressed out and shit because I can't get a job in my in my field of study. Unless you go into it like a, you know, um, being doctors and lawyers and engineers and stuff like that. Like those people, those experts that got on stage. Yesterday was a DNA expert, expert bitch. When I tell you she broke that shit down, I understand everything. Everything, I'm an expert. Everything you need to know about DNA, girl, the diva knows now, honey. Because some white lady was on the stand yesterday explaining. Had a PowerPoint presentation and everything, bitch had a PowerPoint presentation and she explained how they determine who was present on the person's body, who was there. Girl. You wait till I tell y'all. <laughs> you wait, I'll give, give me a little, I'll give you a little bit, but not enough to get my ass in trouble. But yeah, the DNA expert, she was in there. And she has been, she said she'd been in her job. What'd she say? And, and to me, as soon as she said how the length of time she's been, like almost 20 years, I thought she looked fairly young. And I thought to myself, she woke up one morning and was like, I want to be a criminalist. I want to figure out, I want to look at DNA to figure out if someone committed a crime or not. Like these are professions. I don't know. You know, I don't, I know, I know we should spotlight a lot more people, um, that do jobs outside of media and entertainment you know what I mean we should we should because there are other you tell your kids there's other ways that you can be wealthy you don't have to be wealthy by sweating for somebody you know what I mean you don't there's other ways there's very there's so many black people who are so accomplished and who are very wealthy who have a lot of money who are very comfortable and they don't sweat <laughs> and they don't sweat for nobody, honey. They don't do it. You know what it is? You know what it is. I'm going in this this bend right here. So I'm going to see what's going to happen at work today. I don't know if the people are back at work. But did you guys see on the um, on the Lysol can? The Lysol can has coronavirus. That The Lysol can says that it kills the coronavirus. So it's nothing new. Um, so where are you going with a kid in your car like that? That's crazy. Driving crazy. I don't like for people to drive reckless. I don't. It, it doesn't, I don't, it doesn't sit well with me. Anyways, um, what was I saying? Yeah, so on the Lysol can, at the bottom, it says kills coronavirus. So, you know, every now and again, we have to, they have to instill some level of fear um in people and they you know what i'm talking about they but this and what i wanted to talk about too was i have so many thoughts in my head y'all what i wanted to talk about too was that that attachment to being afraid of something like i was thinking about kobe look at the sun yes come on through uh, it rises every morning the sun rises every morning right okay um Kobe, his death, and all of these conspiracy theories surrounding his death. And I'm like, why are we, why do we go to the worst possible interpretation of someone's death? Why don't we look at the time that he, the time that it was announced? They look at his birth chart. Let's look at the, the, the positivity around this human being's life instead of thinking that someone killed him why is that the thing that we go to like right away why are we always having this attachment to the boogeyman you know what i'm saying like why do we do that and i don't know why 
we do that i have no idea why we do that and i was thinking about that like all of these conspiracy theories that kobe was killed on purpose for whatever reason for whatever reason you want to put out there why don't you think about no he ascended during the time and everybody who has who and think about everybody who has the same birthday as him think about how they feel think about the energy that this person with this birthday left the the plane that we are the physical realm that we're in let's talk to those people and see how they felt that day yes they're sad and everything but there's a beauty in this person's life that should be spoken about instead of some conspiracy theory for us to be afraid of something like why do we do that i don't know why we do that Y'all tell me in the comments and let me know because I have no idea why we do that. And I'm like, why are all these, what is these conspiracy theories for? What? And then after you tell me the conspiracy theory, what's next? And then somebody in the comments said, it's so that people don't sell, so that kids don't sell your soul. You know what? I'm tired of people acting like they care so much about kids because they really don't. Nobody cares about you. It's like an excuse. Oh, kids, we care about the kids. We care about the kids. How many kids are being trafficked, trafficked, trafficked? how you say it traffic trafficking there's human trafficking shit i can't even talk human trafficking going on by the with with the assistance and the aid from law enforcement agencies y'all don't care about these damn kids it's so kids don't sell their soul what no no that's not it stop talking about stuff stop trying to instill fear in people this is a, a life that we are living we are living life it should be beautiful we should talk about things that make us grow big not things that make us scared all the time why we always got to be scared of somebody or scared of something we know the systems that are in place but we don't have to be scared of them and there's a and there's an awareness that you can have about whatever you want to be as fucking woke as you want to be you can be as fucking woke as you want to be but why you if you so woke why the fuck you scared of everything why the fuck you talking about a conspiracy theory and saying that somebody was murdered like and then if he was what what then what so what you're doing is instead of talking about this person's life in a positive way you want to get on the airwaves and send out frequencies of fear and frequencies of doubt and frequencies of paranoia why are you doing that why why don't you talk about this person, oh, I owe it. We owe it to his his wife so she can know what the fuck. You don't owe it to nobody. You don't give a damn. You don't give a damn, really. You don't. Why do we do that? Why do we do that? Y'all answer me. Why do we do that? You get on this damn thing and then start speaking out things of fear, like weeds. You putting weeds. Out. I'm gonna use a garden as an analogy. You throwing seeds of doubt and fear and all of that and lack why don't you put some drop some seeds of growth drop some seeds of love and awareness and stuff like that we could talk excuse me we could talk about all the negative things we want to talk about and of course there has to be a balance but why do you choose why does that have to be you why are you bringing that kind of balance to the situation come on come on y'all what okay i have my badge and everything child because i ain't been here in a while since last friday huh so i mean that's why i don't understand i was like uh, I, I i haven't even tried i haven't even tried to watch not a doctor where's your school umar johnson not a doctor not a doctor and you getting on tv in somebody's playground honey because the people said they done kicked you out of the house because they don't take that shit outside all that shit you talking about and the conceit of conspiracy y'all gotta think he was try he was in uh what he say what that nigga say he was in in a legal battle with a pharmaceutical company okay we know it's a pharmaceutical like i gotta understand like there's like i want you to be aware like that's that's here's the thing you're you're telling us all these things in order for us to be aware but in your awareness you're teaching people to be a, afraid of something there's something you need to be afraid of there's something that we need to blame something on you know we need to fi figure out a way to blame somebody for something instead of saying you know what every all every last one of us is going to leave this physical realm 
every last one of us and nobody exempt nobody no matter money nothing is going to exempt you from me from meeting your time so let's talk about look at the turkeys let's talk about this person especially somebody like this person who yes had a mistake but changed his behavior and you ain't never heard nothing and went on to create in his professional life went on to create cre you know be the best and then after that it start working with children and being around children and making avenues for children to be great and creating a space where children can read about sports figures and, and promoting kids to read and literacy and stuff like that. But y'all, oh, he died because da da da. No! That's out of here. That's out of here. That shit is played the fuck out. Aren't y'all tired of being scared of some shit? That shit is dumb as hell. I'm tired of that shit. It's always a goddamn conspiracy. We know how the shit works. The, with the awareness, to me, I feel like if there's a sense of awareness, that kind of reduces, should reduce the fear. No. If you are made aware of your surroundings, and it reduces the fear of something or anything. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm here, y'all. Um, I haven't been here in, what, a week? Child. And then I got to come Monday, Tuesday. When's the fifth? Let me see how much a high school diploma is worth. Let's see. It says. Let's see. What is a high school diploma worth? It says earning a high school diploma can be worth $9,000 a year. So you want me to cut my shit off for $9,000? No. No, thank you. For a piece of paper worth $9,000 a year. It ain't worth nothing. Anyways, I'm out of here, y'all. Y'all take care of each other. Protect your energy. Um, Yeah, you know what it is. We'll get down in the comments. Let me see if y'all had anything else you want. It's, uh, I'm early, heck of early. Um, let me see what y'all want to talk about. Y'all that's y'all saw that picture of daddy. Team daddy bitch. That's why Heavenly act a damn fool about her man. You see what he looked like, right? Okay. You see what he looked like? Thick as shit. Oh, Pastor Troy. Child, no. Pastor Troy, it's expected. I don't even uh Erica Dick Erica Dixon being attacked for not Oh, you guys have a lot of